Oh, this might be the best sounding car I've ever driven. Welcome back to Petrol Poodle. After a short hiatus and a little streak of a few sensible cars, I knew it was worth waiting to come back with a bang. And well, here we are. I honestly think this is probably one of the greatest PR car announcements in the last 50 years, the Jaguar F-Type. Now, obviously it's been around for eight years. So, so today, whilst it's not exactly common, it's not rare either, but rewind yourself to 10 years ago. Remember where Jaguar was? And at this point, we were almost 40 years since the last E-Type had left the factory. It's as if they kind of gave up. They knew that was way too iconic to ever touch again. And they got a little bit comfortable making OAP mobiles, getting people from prostate exam to prostate exam. Then I think they realized we need to try and capture the hearts of the younger market again. We need to try and get this to a new buyer. And so they took on the massive task of creating the successor to the E-Type. It, it immediately became the car I was most excited about for the last 20 years. This is the most exciting car for me. However, we're now in 2021. This car is now, well, the first one is now eight years old. I've now had the luck and the fortune to drive some really, really nice cars to review all sorts of things. Lotus Exige this, catering that, some, some rare, you know, fun hat, hot hatches, etc. I feel like I'm in a very good place now to finally meet my hero and to see if it does live up to the hype. But most importantly, on, in a bigger picture, should you buy a Jaguar F-Type? And are they worth the potential reliability headache? Let's find out. So obviously we've got to start with the interior. Now, before you go anywhere and embark on your first exciting drive or not, you're going to be looking at your interior. And if you're actually thinking about buying one of these, how does it compare to the rivals? Well, Jaguar decided to aim this between the Cayman and Boxster and the 911, somewhere between, about halfway between those two in terms of pricing. You've obviously got things like the Audi TT RS and similar Mercedes, which I'll pop up on screen, can't think of now. Now, I don't know where I picked this up from, but I seem to have it in my head that it was one of those cars where Jaguar's interiors weren't quite as good as the German ones, but you get so much car for your money, you get so much engine, etc. Well, sitting in it today, this is absolutely stunning. And it's, it's really, really nice quality. And the German cars that come to mind that I've sat in, you know, came in GTS, etc. This is on par with that. It really is really beautifully built. Um, the features that you get, or can get, shall I say, let's go through some optional extras. We've got heated seats, heated steering wheel, active exhaust, which is an exhaust which uh, you, you know, opens or closes depending on the mode that you're in. We've got the Meridian sound system. Uh, these are sports seats, so these are two and a half grand over the normal ones so they look a little bit cooler you've got your typical stuff dual zone climate control which was not standard uh, front parking sensors rear parking sensors rear camera all good everything you honestly need in the car especially a good sound system as well now the head unit the 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 brains of the car always the risk that when you don't go route with uh, android auto and apple carplay it's a matter of time until this is aging and and getting old now thankfully matt the owner tells me that you know, the navigation is fine. It's not Google Maps good. It's fine, it got him here today, no problem. Music's good, connects to phones. Yeah, it does what you need it to do, but I suppose that's that interface is going to age. Um, I'm not really too fussed about that. This car is about more than that to me. Um, overall, very impressed. This little, these air vents go up and down, nice little touch, obviously a little bit of added weight, but who really cares? Adjustable seats in every direction. It's a good place to be. I think I'm ready to take this thing for a drive. Let's go. And so, I can't believe it. I'm sat here driving an F-Type. I'm only about 100, 200 meters down the road now. Initial impressions are obviously favorable. It's got very, very reactive engine. So, throttle response, really, really good. This one is a three liter V6 supercharged uh, engine. So we're talking 380 horsepower, I, I brake horsepower, I see 375 thrown around as well. But either way, absolutely plenty. 0 to 60 is 4.9 seconds. That is as fast as anything honestly needs to be. Oh, Woo! oh mercy. I'm not even in dynamic mode. The exhaust is in its quiet mode right now. 
So actually the first thing that I noticed was was actually how uh, how nice the suspension was, which coming out of a Honda Civic from 2010, anyone who's driven that will go will know that it has got the uh, ride quality of a skateboard. So low bar, but I, I was, you know, this car weighs a lot. We're talking 16, 1700 kilos. It's a, it's a heavy boy. So I wasn't expecting the suspension to be so compliant. Ridiculous, that's silly. It's not it's not often that I am kind of left speechless. <laughs> so the supercharge aspect makes this instantaneous. It's nice and talky down low. It sounds great. God it pulls well. Okay, steering. Now the steering is obviously electric it's perfectly good it's quite meaty but um, at the moment it doesn't feel like enormously communicative um, you know that the Megane Trophy R that I drove for electric steering that absolutely blew me away and okay that's a that's a track monster I suppose they put real time into exactly how that's going to feel on the limit this isn't really that kind of car and I'm not going to throw it around in a way today where I learn what it's like to drift and oversteer, partly because I would be shit at that and I would smash the car. And the other part for my ego, I'd just say, no, 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 it's not really fair on the owner thanks to me today. Um, but I don't think most people who buy this really expect to drive like that. And even speaking to the owner himself today, he hasn't actually driven it in that kind of, in that way. It's not that car. It's not pretending to and trying to be a Lotus. You know, it's not going to be the sharpest Cayman. It's a kind of, it's a sports car with a hard edge that you could still take a long distance. Other thing, body roll. I, I kind of did go quite quickly into some corners there and it, it has a very, very nice chassis. It's, it's really hiding its weight. I was expecting this car to feel quite doughy. As someone who owns a Mazda MX-5 and, and, you know, weight figures for this being around the 1600 to 1700 kilos, depending on configuration. I was really expecting to feel that difference. They've done a very good job of hiding that. I suppose one of the first things that I would be asking is who would buy a Jaguar F-Type? Why would you buy one? And it's definitely got one of those qualities where it's not about what makes sense on paper. You could tell me 10 reasons why an Audi TT RS makes more sense than this car. You could tell me why a manual Cayman uh, of any age would be a more involving, blah, 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 better chassis, and fine, I'm, I'm sure you'd be right. And that's exactly how Matt feels as well. Like, yeah, there are probably other better cars for the money or whatever, but the fact is, I want an F-Type. You know, it feels this exact slot of being, doing something its way, it feels special. And especially to know that we've not seen 20 years of F-Types on the road. They only came out eight years ago, and they're not that common. They feel like a sense of occasion when you see them on the road. And it does what it does very, very, very well. Sixty miles an hour, just like that. Um, shit, like that's that's magical. That's absolutely magical. I'm I'm not thinking what else I would have. I'm asking myself, could I buy one? Could I live with it? Could how would my first car headache make me feel if I, if I had a, an F-Type? If you're not really too aware about the Jaguar reliability, well, Jaguar Land Rover have consistently come last every year for a very long time in, in all kind of data, all studies and owner, owner uh, surveys, etc. So it, it sounds like it's bad news that they're in, in a company where, which come consistently last place. But that is factoring in Range Rovers. And it's actually Range Rovers really that make up the majority of those negative um, statistics. They're, you know, they're always pushing the boundaries for technology and you know, practically having night, night vision systems with running on bat size and things like that. You know, they're always doing ludicrous things and weirdly enough, these toys go wrong. Now, as I said before, this car's really nicely kitted out. 
But it's not trying to do something next gen with any of its technology. It is tried and tried and trusted. So for a Jaguar, this is actually one of the most reliable models they make. And if you know me and you know the channel already, I've definitely had reliability PTSD where I've been stung so hard so many times that I've often said, if a car's unreliable, I won't consider it. Fact, like I'm done. I, I, I don't want ownership to be ang anxiety inducing. I don't want to have unexpected huge bills. A car's not worth it. There are very few exceptions for me to that rule. And the F-Type, as I said earlier, has been this dream car of mine. And I've known it's not had a perfect record. But for me, it's been like, what's my tolerance? I reckon it's quite a good tolerance for this car. And, um, you know, this is a friend of mine, Matt, who bought this car. And when he started looking at an F-Type, I said to him, be careful of the earliest ones. They had the most issues. I think it's like teething as they were on a slightly new platform, etc. Although we're using the old tried and trusted engines. Very sadly, six weeks into ownership, he had his first fuel injector issue. I say first, he had his fuel injector issues amongst a couple of other small things. We're about three grand into car repairs for this car. And, and granted, that particular issue was actually very unlucky, apparently, for, for what he had and then the damage that came off of that. Um, so it was, it was rare but it was also really expensive to put right and it required a specialist to come sort it out, not even like the Jaguar dealerships themselves could do it. So, you know, it's not been free of headaches in the first couple of months of ownership, sadly. And it's something you have to consider. If your budget is exactly the money for one of these, I don't think you should buy it. I think you should buy one of these if you've got a bit of spare cash and you can afford the problems. The good news is, whilst he's had to spend this money on it, the car is so, so good, and it makes him feel so good driving it and turning up to places and people being wowed and little kids like getting all excited at the side of the road and stuff. It gives you an ownership experience. On the other hand, this actually, I, you feel like you've got a supercar without the pretentiousness of a supercar. He said it's just this really exciting feeling that you pull in places and people are wowed by it, but not in a show offy way because people actually like the brand Jaguar a lot. They, they don't, it's not really a hated brand. So this car, so far for Matt, has had its issues, but it hasn't made him regret buying it. He's not gone, do you know what, I just should have got something else. And I can see why. So then when you're looking at that budget of high 20s, wherever they begin, and low 30s for an F-Type, it really is the V6S that makes the most sense. It, it really is. You can get a manual later, but for the money, and for how new this car feels still, and for how it makes you feel, it's, it's, it's incredible. You can hear crackles and pops of bloody farting two litre TFSIs, you know. Oh, here comes a Golf R. Pa, 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 pa. So, oh. You know, you hear these crappy pops and bangs put into cars, but they shouldn't really be pops and bangs in my opinion. But in this car, it makes sense. It's got this three litre V6 that's just screaming away. It's a proper sports car. It's allowed to crackle and pop. Um, one of the things just come to me actually, you spend so much of your time driving, and honestly, especially in the UK, suboptimal conditions. If you live anywhere within like a 100 mile radius of London in any direction, you've pretty much got crap roads full of cars everywhere. And really, you have to make sure that your expensive, fun sports car is actually enjoyable in crap conditions. And that this ZF Auto, single clutch, is absolutely brilliant. It's really, really fast. If someone told me that was dual clutch, I would believe it. Um, it's smooth, it's a very relaxing place to be. If you're in traffic, you think, okay, cool, I'm just gonna kick back. And then that's kind of when this car leans back on its Jaguar heritage, you know, there to cosset the man with a sore prostate. You know, just there to, oh, fantastic. I've just fired someone, my investments are doing great, I retire next year, thank God I got a Jag. You know, it goes back to those roots of being a nice place to chill. It's a, it's a good place. I, I really I really enjoy being in this. I'm someone that owns a, a Mark III MX-5. They hardly beat you up, no. And actually, I've done six hours, uh, done long road trips in that car, great. But there's definitely times, now that I own a daily that's comfortable and quiet and sensible, when I've got a really long drive to do to get somewhere nice, 
It's not, honestly, it's not the MX-5 that I want to do the long motorway drive in. It's really bloody not. I want to arrive in the MX-5. I don't want to drive it there, especially like driving to the south of France soon for a wedding. I'm like, oh, which car do I take? But this is that car that I think can, can, can do both things really well. I say do that really well. If you're taking your other half with you and they want to pack options for their outfits, we all know that. A guy packs six t-shirts for six days, done. This boot doesn't have a very, it's not very big. Um, Clarkson really ripped the crap out of it. And I know that the one that he had, I think had the spare wheel in it. And so to conclude the Jaguar F-Type review, one unbelievable achievement for Jaguar to come back kind of almost out of the ashes with the kind of stuff they were producing only 10 plus years ago. It was never really world beating stuff. And you know what? This probably isn't world beating either, but it, it's captured imagination. It's captured passion. I mean, look at the design of this thing. Listen to the sound it makes. Look at the quality of the interior. You know, if you're someone that's a track demon, yeah, you're gonna take something else. If you've got the best Welsh B-Rose right on your front door, maybe it makes sense for you to have a Cayman or an M2 CS or whatever. But actually, for most people and the, and the amount of time you spend driving on the roads in non-optimal conditions, having a car like this makes total, total sense. I, I, I can't believe we're at a place now where these are 27, 28 grand starting price. And actually the difference between the V6, the V6S, and even some V8s, there's not that much in it in terms of cost. So pick whichever one suits you best. For me, I would go for the V6S. I don't need the extra power of the V8. I, th I know they're awesome, I know they sound insane, but it, it's absolutely enough. It sounds great, it's fast. I mean, it's not good on fuel, but hey, it's got start stop. So I guess that, that equals that out. Um, would you, should you buy one of these? For most people, if you can afford it, it should be right up there as a consideration. And if you think something else is better suited to you, I'd say drive one of these anyway. But obviously, as I've said before, go in with your eyes open and know what you could be dealing with. I mean, a new battery for this, 450 pound plus fitting for a new battery. A service, 600 to 1,000 pounds is quite typical. The fuel injector issue, one of the rarer, but actually fuel injectors are one of the common issues with these generally. This particular type of fuel injector issue ended up costing 2,000 pounds. So, it's not a cheap car, but when you compare it to the thrills you'd get in something three times the price, then I think it's an absolute bargain. So it's all kind of relative as to which end of the spectrum you're coming from, I suppose. I've absolutely loved it. It lived up to incredibly high expectations. I was ready to be disappointed if I kind of overhyped it, and I really wasn't. So I'd love to know what you think. What would you have? Would you be a Lotus Savora person, a Cayman person, a TTRS, an M2? What kind of stuff would you be having at this money? And if you've had an F-Type, what's your experience been like? Let me know. Hope to see you in the next one. Oh, like and subscribe, classic. Have you heard that one before? Like and subscribe. I'd love to see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye. Bosch.